I put my face down in the right hand corner because I seen that's what like a lot of professional looking YouTubers do. I know that I'm ugly. If it's distracting, let me know. We can do away with that. I'm Scar and I'm a super average producer. Decided to start a tutorial series to give you guys some of the info and knowledge that I've got over the last year or two that I feel like have helped me a lot in terms of producing. Um, stuff that I would have killed to know a year or two ago. So a lot of the info I'm gonna be giving out is um, like mix engineering knowledge, but really in a context that you can translate back to the production end to help with your beats. I feel like having a good knowledge of mixing and engineering will really help you level up as a producer and find an original, unique sound to you. I'm never gonna be like a technical engineer type, tell you exactly how to EQ a piano or a snare. Anything that you guys wanna learn or hear about, I'll do my best to cover. A lot of what I like to do is on like the creative end of mixing. When I wanted to learn about mixing and engineering, I thought it was just making stuff sound good. Um, I didn't understand what a creative element there is to it and how much you you can really help make your sound more unique and grow as a producer. Let's jump into it. I figured to save your time, to save my time, and so y'all don't have to watch me struggle. Rather than cook up from scratch, um, I'm just gonna break down something I've already done and walk you through the thought process and some of the key elements that really um, made the beat what it is. So I'm gonna play it real quick and then I'm gonna run through what I did. Yeah, you, you get it from there. So what I did was the beat started super simple like most of my stuff does. I started with a simple set of chords. So I think, yeah, I made these chords using Scalar, ran them through like a bell type piano and Omnisphere. And it's just a really, really simple chord progression. So I'll play it dry as it was. EQ'd it a little bit, cut out some lows, cut out some high highs. What I like to do is send things to aux tracks and aux sends. What is an aux send? All an aux send is, is essentially creating a layer for an effect rather than applying the effect directly to the track. So rather than applying a reverb directly to my chords, I click down here. I sent it to track 27. On that track 27, I have a reverb. 100% wet. Remember, it's like a whole nother track, so you gotta EQ that too. I'm cutting out below 700. You could probably even cut more if you wanted. On the original chords, I'm only cutting it like 200. So really, you have a lot more control over the effect. I can control how much I want sent to the effect by this knob, the volume of the reverb, I can EQ the verb differently. It gives you a lot more control. I see most producers just adding verb delays directly to tracks, and it's not wrong at all. There's no right and wrong in this stuff. Doing it this way just gives you a lot more control over the effect. You can hear it dry, and then I will turn it on with the effect so y'all can see. It adds like a lot more um, ambience. So it's dry. The reason I like this, especially for reverbs, is you've all seen a wet dry knob. If you add wet to it to make give it that reverb sound, you're taking some dry away from the signal. If you do it like this, via like an aux send or an aux track, you can maintain the 100% dry signal and then have a 100% wet layer on top. And like I said, it's just like a lot more control. And it also gives you like a 2D element because you're not altering that initial dry signal. It'll definitely give you control over your effects. The next thing I did after that was I sent it to an aux delay. This will really help you be efficient if you get some delay send set up. I just have basically a half note, quarter, and an eighth note delay set up. I just sent these chords to like, I think I went with a quarter note delay. So you can hear the delay it's adding. 
once again it just gives you a lot more control because i did it via an aux i can treat that delay differently i can eq it differently i could send the delay to the reverb if I want, I could send the delay to another delay. I could distort the delay. The point is that it's not on the original instrument. So you can treat it differently and add a lot more depth. The reason that it wasn't linked when I opened this project to show you guys is because what I did was actually click down here to arm it, clicked over here, rendered a wave, and I printed a copy. That's why you heard the beat actually started out with just a delay. The initial chord isn't even starting the beat. I just printed the delay to start the beat with that to give it more of like an ambient space vibe. And then when that main chord comes in, it fills the space that it feels like it was like missing. So it's just so ambient with an 808 at the beginning. The next thing I did with that delay is I copied it to right here and I reversed the delay. chopped it up a little bit to get it how I wanted. It wasn't just straight up reverse it. But the cool thing I did with that is after I reversed the delay, I sent it back to the delay. Bruh, how the hell do you know this? Like, this is crazy. Nobody, whoa. Yeah, it might be kind of hard to follow, but see if you can follow this. So we had our chords, made a delay by sending chords to delay, printed that delay. We got the printed delay right here. We reversed the delay right here. I put that on track six, sent it back to the delay. So you can hear the reverse has a delay on it. And then what I did with that, clicked here, create automation clip, and I automated that delay so it's not on the whole time. That's why if you listen to just the reverse part, the delay of the reverse stops from here to here when this main chord comes in. And then I just automated it right here to come back in before the drop. So it adds a lot more dynamic. You can see here, I even have it at like what, 25% and it comes in gradually throughout that verse or chorus or whatever part of the song that is. It'll definitely help give you a lot more dynamics throughout your song. Like I said, you can treat it different too. So that reverse delay, you can see how I EQ'd it totally different than the main melody, totally different than the quarter note delay. And you can really just add like a lot more depth. So I think the last thing in this beat I added an aux send to was 808. I do this on almost all my 808s when I distort them. Reason being, if you apply a distortion directly to an 808, you're distorting the entire signal, the lows, the mids, the highs. I think that for 808s, a lot of distortion plugins, if not all of them, I don't really like how they, the low lows, like the 100 to 200 and under sound with a Camel Crusher or a Fruity Fast Distort, Devil Lock, whatever you wanna distort with. I don't like how the low lows sound. What I do instead is I will get my 808, I'll send it, I name this 808 Distort. I use Devil Lock here to distort. I use Camel Crusher a lot. Fruity Fast Distort's one of my favorite, and I use that to distort it. But the catch is that I put an EQ after it, and we're catching everything below like 3K. So I'm just distorting the high highs. Likewise, I don't do this on everything, but there was like a clash of highs from the original signal in the distorted track. You can see that they do overlap, but I cut out some highs on the original 808. Here's how the 808 sounds dry. Add it in. You can control how much of the 808 is being sent to the distortion track, volume of the distortion track, EQ the distortion different, work with the distortion plugin. There's just so many options rather than applying it directly to the 808. And an aux send or an aux track isn't always the way to go. Don't get me wrong, I apply a lot of plugins directly to tracks. Just think about it. Do you wanna create a layer or do you want to use the effect on the entire frequency spectrum of that instrument and completely alter like the landscape of that instrument? That's how you gotta think about it when you're working with aux tracks so yeah hopefully this helps you guys to make your mixes sound a lot bigger and hopefully it helps you guys sound a lot closer to the pros the one thing you got to understand with the pros is they're doing a lot of this they're creating a lot of layers you hear these mixes where the vocal sounds in your face and there's an ambience to it and it's in the middle with the delays and it's just everywhere it the vocal feels like it's so much sitting perfectly on top of the beat because they're using a lot of layers to it they're not just working with one or two recordings or one or two tracks mixing stuff in like that will help you guys have a lot more professional sound it'll definitely add to your production game really appreciate it if you guys could leave your feedback subscribe comment and let me know what you want to see 
I want to focus on beat breakdowns so y'all don't have to watch me struggle through cookups, but I'm open to do anything. Thank you guys for watching and peace.